everyone hear us okay? <laughs> okay, so ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Chan. <laughs> Firstly, we'd, we'd just like to say a massive thank you to, to everyone who's been involved in making this such a wonderful occasion. I think you'll all agree with me, it's been uh, an amazing weekend up to this point. Um, <laughs> in case any of you are wondering why there are three of us stood up here, well, it seems none, none of Johnny's friends were up to the level of best man, so in the end he had to settle for three slightly good ones. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty happy about there being three of us. As a slightly good man, one of your duties is to reveal embarrassing subjects and secrets about the groom's past. <laughs> when the groom happens to be a taekwondo expert with fists like bricks, this can be a pretty dangerous exercise. <laughs> <laughs> it's ten years since I first met Johnny. Our paths crossed at one of the many student nights in Huddersfield when we should have been hard at work studying. We seem to have similar interests. Drum and bass, machines, and we were both southerners learning how to cope with the grim north. We seem to spend most of the year travelling around in Johnny's green Montego. We should hold the record for being the fastest, most broken vehicle ever. He seems to get a lot of enjoyment from slipping it into the smallest gap he could find. He once had to climb out of the boot as he was too close to the cars either side of him. <laughs> but many nights were spent drinking at the student union, thinking about what coursework we should be doing. But somehow, we both passed, passed our first year. It was around this time that Maria first met her future husband. I have no doubt that everyone here remembers the first time they met Johnny. <laughs> Even family must have looked at one another nervously over the cot as he tore up, <laughs> as he tore up toys with his teeth. <laughs> when I first met Johnny, it was obvious he was very special. I was told, as he literally bounced off the walls, that he wanted to be a Formula One driver. I knew that I had to get to know him better, and the rest is history. I'd like to say, when Johnny and Maria met, it was much the same, with her standing in awe of the spectacle that is Johnny. But no, she was annoyed by his arrogance. <laughs> Who does he think he is in his best top? <laughs> standing like a god for all to admire. He looks like an idiot. <laughs> I'm sure he saw this as a challenge and set out to win her hand, which he took yesterday. As a slightly good man, one thing you don't do is challenge Johnny to anything. He always wins. Anyone who has challenged Johnny and lost, raise your hands. The rest no longer have arms. I can only hope that he was a little kinder to Maria as he picked her up and ran to his lair. <laughs> now that they're married, I'm sure he will protect her forever, being the big, big strong god of a man that he is. <laughs> but Johnny isn't just a fighting machine. <laughs> He's also a practical man. A problem solver who loves a challenge. At uni, whilst me and Alex were messing around drawing pretty pictures of cars, Johnny was studying the actual engineering principles that go into making them work. I was always really impressed about his work ethic in the way in which he applied himself to his studies. The more I got to know Johnny, the more I realised he could be two completely different people, and I was never quite sure who I was going to meet. <laughs> One minute, you could be having a debate about the merits of socialism, and the next minute, he'd be showing you his impression of a sloth, using, <laughs> <laughs> using rumours for fools. <laughs> Johnny is a man of the world, and has a keen interest in other cultures. He demonstrated this a couple of years ago when he came over to Germany to visit me when I was living in Nuremberg. During his stay, I took him to a local beer keller to show him some Bavarian hospitality. And it took Johnny no time at all to adapt to this foreign environment. He immediately ingratiated himself with the locals by performing, at full volume, the entire Grange Hill theme tune. <laughs> 
<laughs> the local showed their appreciation by stopping everything up they were doing, turning around and staring at Johnny in complete silence until he finished his flawless rendition. We then drank up, left, and I never went back again. <laughs> Taekwondo is a huge part of Johnny's life and has been for at least the last 15 years. Maria, myself and needless to say many others have had the enjoyment, the pain and the honour of training with him. He has achieved a great deal in the martial art which is a way of life for him. He attained his fourth degree as a black belt last year which as Grandmaster Ree said to him, very good progress. For those who don't know who Grandmaster Ree is, he is considered to be the foremost practitioner of Taekwondo in the whole world and someone Mr Chan has always looked up to. A recent highlight was being picked for the English Taekwondo team and representing England in the European Championships this year in Croatia. He also had the opportunity to train in Korea which is the birthplace of, of Taekwondo. This was during a six month trip around Asia with Maria, no doubt practicing his marathon art skills along the way. <laughs> so, after representing his country in international Taekwondo competitions and marrying this beautiful woman, I have the great honour of announcing, after making room in their home on the horizon, are Twins, uh, twin turbos of a Nissan Skyline. <laughs> I have no doubt they will realise all their life goals, cars, careers, and more. Through the union of marriage, their single minded abilities to achieve anything is now joined. Johnny once said to me, If one man can walk on the moon, then why can't you? They're just flesh and bone the same. I honestly think of this regularly. The chance, and with this positive attitude, will certainly reach the moon and the stars beyond. <laughs> One year, me, Johnny and Maria travelled together to Glastonbury Festival. <laughs> we spent a very tiring evening walking around nearly all five miles of the perimeter fence looking for somewhere to break in. <laughs> when we finally found the spot, our chances were nearly dashed when Maria was spotted by the security guards trying to climb over the top. But rather than just giving up and going home, Maria stayed sitting on top of that fence with her back to the security guards and literally ignored them. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, me and Johnny spent ages collecting twigs and branches from the hedgerows to build a fire. But because I left them at the, the role of the alpha male to Johnny, we then spent the next couple of hours waiting for him to get it lit. Johnny's fire lighting deficiency is something he still struggles with to this day. <laughs> Although his friends are too scared to talk to him about it. So a while later, and in the middle of a field, in the middle of Somerset, surrounded by hundreds of thousands of unwashed people, I ate my first ever Chinese steamed pork bun. This was a really special moment for me, not just because the bun tasted so good, but because of the company. Glastonbury is only as good as the people that you go there with. I went there with Johnny and Maria, and I have really fond memories of that weekend, because they're such a special couple. But marriage wasn't always a foregone conclusion for them. I remember Johnny telling me once that Maria had a question about marriage. He responded, well, I'm already married to Taekwondo. <laughs> Needless to say, this didn't go down very well with Maria, but this amazing weekend proves that he was only half joking. <laughs> I'm very happy that the sloth and Maria have finally tied the knot. <laughs> she is truly an amazing lady, and on behalf of all his mates, I would have to say Johnny's a lucky guy to finally call her his wife. So ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses to their new life together. To Mr. and Mrs. Chan.